This is the Winning Cures Everything College Football Playoff Top 25 Reaction Show for November the 20th. Uh, if you were wondering what the hell I'm doing, I am at my in-laws and we still had to get the show done. Uh, my wife did not pack the microphone, so it is just me and you in the back of a van. <laughs> So I wanted to make sure we had a nice enclosed space so you can actually hear me. Uh, Chris is on vacation, so I am knocking this thing out myself. Let's go on and run through. We're going to go through number 25 all the way to 1, figure out what the committee got right, what they got wrong. Let's talk about it. Number 25, we got Iowa State. Uh, the only reason I think that they are still ranked is so that Oklahoma actually has at least one top 25 win in order for them to keep them as high as they did. Um, you know, they do have that win over West Virginia, which doesn't look as nice now because of Oklahoma State's win last week. But either way, uh, number 24 is Pitt. They have won the ACC Coastal. They are on a roll. I can understand this one. 23, Boise State. Uh, their win over Fresno a couple of weeks ago, definitely good. Um, they win again last week. Always good. Uh, number 22, Texas A&M. Now, I don't understand this one. I, I can't, for the life of me, figure this one out. Um, why would you have A&M ranked instead of Missouri? I, I guess they have a lot of respect for UAB, who was 9-1 before they came in, but, but UAB hadn't beaten anybody either. I don't understand that one. Uh, their best win is an overtime win at home, 20-14 to over Kentucky. And Missouri's best win is a 38-17 to shellacking at Florida, who the committee has number 11. We'll get to them here in a minute. Uh, I, I don't understand it. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but okay, I'm with you. Number 21 is Utah State. Now, Utah State has not beaten anybody worthwhile, but they will get their chance. Uh, th this sets up a 21 versus 23 Utah State at Boise State this weekend. So I, I see what the committee was doing there. 21 through 25, there's a few issues, but overall, I can understand it. Number 20 through 16, we got Syracuse at number 20. Um, I, they're 8-3. and three. They've only got two wins over teams with winning records. Um, you know, that's NC State and Western Michigan, and I don't think either of those are great. Uh, I think this is more just their scheduling, right? They had a close loss at Clemson against their third-string quarterback. I guess that's why they're here. Against Notre Dame, they did not look like they belonged on the field. Uh, and I understand, yes, all of you that want to jump in and say that Eric Dungy got, you know, knocked out, I understand that. But Tommy DeVito had come in and saved him in the past. So, you know, take for that what you will. Number 19 is Northwestern. Okay, you know, they're playing well. Uh, they haven't looked great by any means all season, but they always get wins in the Big Ten. Uh, the fact that there is a four-loss team in the Big Ten that will be representing uh, the Big Ten West, that's interesting, uh, to say the least. Number 18, Mississippi State, another four-loss team, not a ton of great wins, but respectable, and they've been absolutely dominating people. Uh, they played Alabama about as tough as anybody has, so I, I can understand why they would have them there. Number 17, Utah, the Pac-12 South winners. Number 16, Washington. I can understand both of those. Washington beat Utah earlier in the season. Uh, Utah is Washington State's best win as well. So, uh, 20 through 16, I have no problem with. All of these seem fair. It seems reasonable. So let's jump into 15 through 11. Number 15 is Kentucky. Okay. like I, they, they haven't looked great, but they are they're getting by. They've got good wins on, uh, on the resume. They've got that win against Florida. Uh, they've got a big win over Mississippi State. Yeah, I, I get it, you know, and, and they are one of the teams that did beat Missouri, who's a four-loss team who I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, I can understand Kentucky. Uh, number 14 is Texas. They have got the win over Oklahoma. They lost to Oklahoma State, and that uh, loss actually looks a little better after uh, West Virginia uh, also lost to them. Um, and then Texas also lost to West Virginia as well. So is what it is. Um, number 13, West Virginia. Lost at Oklahoma State this week. They dropped quite a bit uh, out of the top 10. Number 12 is Penn State. This is a team that 
they got three losses, but it seems like everybody in college football has either one or three losses, Sands, LSU, and West Virginia. So, uh, Penn State looks good. I mean, they look, they, they fought to a 20-7 to win at Rutgers, so whatever, right? They play Maryland this week after Maryland gave a scare to Ohio State. So we'll we'll see what they can do with that, and we'll see if James Franklin's going to stick around or if he's going to go to USC. Whole lot to discuss there, but obviously we'll get to that in the offseason. Number 11, Florida. Good win over LSU. Uh, they lost to Georgia. They lost to Kentucky. Um, they lost to Missouri. Florida's okay. Like, they're good. Now let's move into our top 10. Ohio State is at number 10. And what this means, <laughs> what this means is UCF is number nine. Now, uh, Ohio State, they only have two wins over teams with winning records. And they have got the worst loss of any team in the top ten by far. It's not even close. At Purdue, 49-20. to 20, UCF is undefeated. They've gotten four wins against teams with winning records. Um, their best win is actually better than any of Oklahoma's wins, which is crazy. Uh, their best win is over number 24, Pitt. And then last week, they did beat Cincinnati, who was number 21, I believe, at the time. Maybe 24, I'm not certain. Either way, they were in the top 25. So, um, but yeah, UCF, they've, they're starting to rack up some pretty good wins. Number eight is Washington State. Their best win is over number 17, Utah. They beat them 28 to 24 at home. They have got wins over five teams with winning records. Uh, their best win is better than Oklahoma's, and their loss to USC. Uh, you know, okay, Oklahoma's got a better loss, uh, but the loss to USC really probably shouldn't have been a loss. And I think the committee should look at that uh, the same as a win, because had that pl had that play that targeting call been called correctly, then. Washington State would be undefeated right now. Number seven, LSU stands pat. They uh, they have beaten the number five team, which is Georgia, and they beat the number 18 team, Mississippi State. They lost to Alabama, who is number one, and they lost to number 11, Florida. They have beaten five teams with winning records. I can understand LSU, but don't worry. LSU will be junked, okay? That is going to happen. If Washington State wins out, if UCF wins out, if Ohio State wins out, they will be junked. Uh, number five, Georgia. They've got six wins against team with winning records. They uh, they beat Kentucky. They beat Florida. Pretty good wins there. They've beaten Auburn. Uh, Auburn's not in this, but we'll get to them in a minute. Number four is Michigan. Michigan has wins over number 12, Penn State, and number 19, Northwestern. Northwestern was a really close game at Northwestern. Penn State, they just blew the doors off of them. So I can understand that. They got five wins against team with winning records. Notre Dame, five wins against teams with winning records. They have three top 25 wins. Clemson is at number two with seven wins against teams with winning records. So I can I, I think that's why they have them at number two and not Notre Dame. Although Notre Dame has three top 25 wins and the best win of anybody on this entire thing, their win is over number four, Michigan. Clemson's best wins? Yes, I understand they got seven wins over teams with winning records. But their best wins are number 20, Syracuse, and number 22, Texas a &M. Both of them very, very close. Number one is Alabama. They got six wins against teams with winning records. They have got three top 25 wins. Number seven, LSU. Number 18, Mississippi State. And number 22, Texas A&M. The four teams in the Massey Composite Top 25 that did not rank in this Top 25, number 16, Missouri. I don't understand why they are not ranked and Texas A&M is, but okay. You know, I could see Missouri over Iowa State. I could see Missouri over Texas A&M. I could see Missouri over, I mean, even Boise State or Pittsburgh. I, either one of those. Even Utah State with, with their one loss. Um, Missouri's played a tough schedule. They have lost to Kentucky, who is number 15 on here. They've lost to Georgia, who is number five. They've lost to number one, Alabama. And they do have a weird crazy, delayed, in-the-rain loss by two on a last-second field goal at South Carolina. So, had they won that, they'd probably be in the top 15 right now, which is crazy to think about. Uh, number 21 in the Massey Composite is Fresno State. 
they will have their chance. They will play in the Mountain West Conference Championship game against either Boise or Utah State. They will get a chance to be ranked at the end of this. Number 23 is Iowa. Uh, they blew the doors off Illinois last week. And Iowa's a good football team. They they had a rough stretch there. Should have beaten Wisconsin. Probably should have beaten Penn State. Probably should have beaten Purdue. But it is what it is. You lose some of those games, you're going to get knocked out. And then number 25 in the Massey Composite is Auburn. They're 7-4. and four. The narrative on them is they're just not that good. But they are 7-4. and four. They Their losses are all two good teams. They have not been beaten by a bad team. So if you're going to have four loss teams ranked, eh, you might want to think about Auburn here. I think overall this week, pretty good ranking. Uh, it sets up everything nicely for the end of the season. This is rivalry week coming up. We'll see what happens. Uh, but stick around. We'll be back next week with a ton more. Chris and I will be back in studio. I won't be doing it from the back of a van at my in-laws. We'll see you guys next go-round.